All right, hi again. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, creating more interesting and more artistic friendly uh, lighting for 3D. Uh, it can be very easy to create 3D in Howler, uh, but getting a, a very appealing and uh, uh, more interesting lighting in, in 3D can be challenging. So let's just dive right in. Uh, one thing I like to do is just to go ahead, go ahead and turn on ray tracing. Uh, for that light, uh, just put it on soft. That way we get a better indication of where our light's coming from. Uh, now, this may be slightly cosmetically different than what you're used to, but the functions are the same, so just uh, work along with me here. I'm going to uh, go into the lighting here. Uh, we have three controls, azimuth, altitude, and zenith. This may, might be a little bit uh, different than what you're used to working in in 3D, but azimuth is basically... Uh, rotating around the center point of our 3D object. Altitude is basically the height or the, the distance from the surface in on the uh, on the y-axis or the uh, on the vertical. As you can see we put it all the way down and you can see the the shadows are very uh, very elongated and the light is very bright because it's very close to our ground and, and, and ultimately uh, the part of the light even disappears underneath the uh, the 3d object so i'm going to leave uh this fairly low uh and to me the most interesting lighting happens around the sunset uh so let's do a sunset scene i'm going to make the light a little bit orange or a little bit yellower here than what comes uh as the default default light and i'm going to balance that out by making the uh, the secondary light a little uh more saturated as well more of a bluer color uh, when these when these are mixed together, uh, they'll come out still still kind of whitish, but we'll get more interesting shadows. Um, and we're just gonna go with that. Oops, go with that. There. Uh, the second light is usually a fill light. It doesn't have shadows. It's only the first light that has shadows. That's usually the sunlight. All right. I'm gonna take the zenith. Now this is uh, a little bit. Uh, like if we put this at zero the light will be directly overhead and the further we move this out the further away our lights gonna get from the center uh, you'll see this happening you'll see these shadows are getting longer and longer and longer and longer uh, and the lights getting darker and darker so let's put that pretty far out we can always change this light range the light range is basically how bright the the light is relative to uh, how far away it is. Uh, we'll have to bring that up some because the light's so far away. Now you can see we have these very long shadows. We have this very contrasty looking uh, lighting. We still have white because uh, yellow and blue are complementary colors, and when they mix, they make white. Uh, so even though we have sunset colors, uh, we're getting sort of a white. So if you did want more sunset color, you could always balance this out by having uh less of one or the other it's very yellow or we could have more blue and turn off the white etc etc but let's uh let's just have them like that uh, a little less than that actually uh might do the same with the second light as well um as we said the azimuth is the rotation around uh and since um in fact let's go ahead and finish this first light first uh, I want this to be maybe over here, uh, coming from the right-hand side, and I want the other light to come from the left-hand side because it's like a fill light, and I'm going to move it down by changing the altitude, and I'm going to move it out by changing the zenith, and then I'll make it brighter by changing the light range. And now we have two very contrasty lights, um, and they're complementing each, each other because they're rim lighting on uh and and there's like there's not a lot of places where these colors mix there's yellow on one side and blue on the other side so already we have this this uh 3d object that's really popping out of the screen because there's so much so much contrast and so many so much such a variety of different colors in it so uh we've already gone a long way to making this much more interesting uh and uh there's a lot more we can do of course we can add in uh uh, background color from the sky 
Uh, now, when we're doing a suit sunset, traditionally, you know, the Hollywood uh, Vista Vision uh, uh, and everybody likes to put a, like a big, bright orange sky in the background. But that really isn't what a sunset is. Uh, 95% of the sky in a sunset is blue, uh, at least if you don't have clouds. And if you live in Southern California where there's no clouds, uh, most of that sky is going to be blue. So we're going to make a blue sunset. And uh, and when you you think a sky the sky is blue the sky is not like deep dark blue the sky is like a really faint blue <laughs> let's just be honest with ourselves here the sky is not a deep dark blue or a deep you know super saturated color it's 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 foggy out it's it's hazy out it's it's just being realistic that's that's our sky color uh let's add some uh let's add a little bit of fog in our scene with fog level we'll just drag that over some until we start to see it um at this point we can start doing things like changing our our camera and getting everything where we really want it and we can also change our uh our camera zoom there's no reason we need to use the default camera zoom uh we can change that and move in a little bit we can move up and down all that stuff all right so uh i think we're we're doing we've done everything we really need to do with this for now let's uh let's see let's add a little more peripheral filtering to that to get rid of some of these these bands in here not quite that much i want some of that banding in there let's try about 75 percent and see what happens 71 percent because they are kind of interesting looking so let's leave that at that uh we're going to turn anti-aliasing all the way up no reason not to do that and tweak our light colors And we're just about there. Uh, we can play around with our light placement at this point. Get it where we want it. Not 100% sure where I want it to be. But. Alright. So that is. Uh, that is our 3D. Scene. Uh, we could also add some fog, ground fog if we wanted to. Turn that on. Hit OK, that'll render. And just like a photograph, once that's done, it doesn't have to be the end of it. You can just as easily go in and make changes to this. Adjust the color, adjust the contrast, sharpen it. There's no reason why you can't sharpen that at this point. Uh, let's see. Kind of Mars-ish. <laughs> you can do adjust... Uh, uh, local contrast or maybe auto balance is very useful sometimes in these kind of scenes yeah, like that right about there looks like something off an old uh, 1970s sci-fi novel or something all right so uh, that is just basically some ways to get uh, uh, some more interesting things happening in your shots uh, I could keep playing with this almost indefinitely uh maybe use the uh the selection fader to add a little bit of a gradient at the top here like that like that uh a little bit too much blue for my taste i'm gonna take this out maybe i don't know let's try adjusting the Q down here and see what happens. We're going we got a selection here and it's only going to be the bottom part of the image uh where you see that. So that's you can you don't have to have the same colors uh across the entire image. That's another thing you can do. Uh that didn't work out necessarily well, but I really don't like that blue quite as much at the bottom. So I'm going to find some way of adjusting that. Uh that's kind of neat. Uh let me take out the blue, want some of that green as well. 
so there you go. So um, just one way of improving 3D in Howler. Uh, thanks for watching and talk to you later.